Welcome, dear listeners, to the A Witch Walks Into a Bar collection. Over the next 10 videos, 10 different witches will lead you through spellbinding stories, each beginning with a witch walking into a bar. From playful pranks to mysterious love connections, these tales blend humor, camaraderie, and a touch of the unexpected. It's a whimsical escape where the mundane meets magic and laughter becomes the norm. So, if you're ready for a lighthearted adventure full of cackles and enchantment, sit back, relax, and let the spellbinding tale transport you to a world where witches are barflies, and every story is a celebration of magic. The adventure begins now. Gretchen lingered across the road from the swine and claw, her orange braid whipping in the wind as she peered intently at the entrance. She knew those ogres had to be leaving soon and was determined to seize the opportunity. With one hand on her hip and the other clutching her trusty witch's hat, Gretchen couldn't help but grumble under her breath. Ogres dandruff? Really? Of all the ridiculous potion ingredients? Her prominent teeth clamped down on her lower lip as she caught sight of several hulking figures emerging from the bar. At last, the moment had arrived. Adjusting her drab black robes, Gretchen crossed the road with purpose. She creaked the pub's door open, revealing the lively scene within. The Swine and Claw wasn't the classiest place in the city of Helgard, and only one of few who catered to magical types, but it had cleaned up its reputation over the past few years as a watering hole for miscreants and thugs. Under new management, she spotted the green goblin proprietor Bartok behind the bar, the band of gnomes up on stage playing a merry tune, and relaxed patrons ranging from stout dwarves to barely their ghosts seated at tables around the room. The mezzanine level remained cordoned off at that time of the afternoon, and Gretchen frowned at the floors, which appeared to have been polished recently. Afternoon, Gretchen, Bartok called with a sly grin. What brings you to our humble abode on this fine day? Oh, you know, potions to brew, spells to cast. I'm on something of a mission today, she said, approaching the bar. Ooh, a mission. Morgana, a younger witch with a penchant for gossip who Gretchen was familiar with, chimed in. Gretchen hadn't spotted her from the doorway and cursed under her breath when the woman flipped her glossy black hair as she emerged from the kitchens, her emerald eyes glittering with curiosity. Do tell. None of your beeswax, Morgana. Gretchen flashed a tight-lipped smile, attempting to appear casual. Just here for a quick drink, that's all. Suit yourself. Morgana shrugged, taking a sip of deep purple witch's brew from a tall glass. But you've got that. I'm up to something. Look about you. Perhaps that's just my spellbinding aura, Gretchen snorted, her eyes scanning the room from the stage where Pipperkin, Tinkertop, and Sprocket the Gnomes struck up a new song to an empty table with three mugs stacked neatly, waiting to be bussed back to the kitchen. Witch's brew, then, Bartok asked, reaching for a glass. At this hour? Nah, I'll stick with ale. Say, Bartok. Gretchen began, feigning nonchalance as she sidled up to the bar. Those ogres who just left your fine establishment, where were they sitting? Ogres? Bartok wiped his hands on his patched leather apron. You could probably still catch them before they head back to the tannery if you're quick, but they were planted at that table in the corner. Much obliged, Gretchen said, tipping her hat with a grin. No problem, Bartok said, his twinkling eyes narrowing slightly, as if he sensed there was more to her question than met the eye. But he didn't inquire further as he poured her a mug of ale. Gretchen took a hearty swig before setting the mug down with a decisive thunk. She casually made her way toward the table in question, hoping the barflies would disregard her for the next couple of minutes. Let's see, ogre's dandruff, she muttered to herself, stopping at the table and lowering herself to a seat. Gretchen thrummed her fingers on the table for a moment, but when the curious gazes of the regulars didn't relent, she slid to the floor, crawling under the table like a stealthy feline on the hunt. Nosy so-and-sos, she grumbled, her voice muffled by the underside of the table. Just a pinch of dandruff. Get a load of this, said a goblin patron at the next table, nudging his companion as they watched the peculiar witch on all fours. Shh! 
She might hear you, hissed another, playfully swatting the goblin's shoulder. She could be casting a spell to give you ingrown toenails as we speak. Gretchen ignored them, still searching for her quarry. Oi, what's going on over there? said Tinkertop the gnome, pausing on his chimes, causing the rest of the band to halt abruptly. Seems our friend Gretchen's gone treasure hunting under a table, Sprocket replied with a mischievous grin, setting aside his miniature drumsticks to get a better look. Treasure hunting, eh? Pipperkin laid his miniature fiddle across his lap. Well, now I've got to see this. Great, Gretchen thought, trying to maintain her focus on her task while feeling the weight of the entire bar's attention. I'm the main attraction. Should have figured these numbskulls have nothing better to do than watch a witch searching for even a speck of dust under this darn table. Say, said Tinkertop, adjusting his round glasses as he leaned against the stage railing. What kind of treasure do you reckon she's after? Gold, jewels, the last remnants of an ogre's dinner, said Sprocket, chuckling at his own joke. Or perhaps something far more rare and valuable, added Pipperkin, twirling his mustache thoughtfully. Like what? asked Tinkertop, genuinely curious now. An ogre's underpants, of course, snorted Pipperkin with a dramatic flourish. I hear that's the secret ingredient for that witch's brew of theirs. Ogre's underpants? Sprocket doubled over in laughter. That's rich. Quiet down, you two, Tinkertop stifled a giggle. You'll give her away. Right, right, Pipperkin wiped tears of mirth from his eyes. Let's watch in respectful silence. Respectful silence was, of course, a highly optimistic term for the barely suppressed snickers that erupted from the trio of gnomes as they watched Gretchen's determined search continue. The witch herself, however, remained steadfastly focused on her quest, her hands patting the floor under the table, desperately feeling for the elusive pinch of ogre's dandruff. But it was all for naught. She stared at her palms without so much as a lick of dust on them. By the whiskers of a thousand cats, she muttered, emerging from beneath the table, her robes no dirtier than when she'd walked in. Disheartened and just a little annoyed, she trudged back to the bar, scowling at the onlooking crowd. Since when have the floors been so darn clean around here, bar talk? Gretchen griped, waving clean hands in emphasis. Anyone would think you have a brownie here or something. Actually, yes, said Bartok, his sly grin widening as he topped up her ale. Bridget started last week. The place is looking good, isn't it? Gretchen groaned and climbed onto a bar stool to figure out her next move, not bothering to explain why she found the bar's cleanliness so egregious. Morgana perched on a stool nearby and arched an eyebrow at Gretchen. Well, she drawled, swirling her glass of witch's brew, you look like you've just crawled out of a dragon's lair. Close, replied Gretchen, taking a hearty gulp of ale. I was trying to find something rather specific. It didn't go as planned. Under a table, Morgana's eyes sparkled with curiosity. Were you searching for some lost treasure? Or maybe eavesdropping on a secret conversation? Gretchen snorted into her ale, wiping her mouth with the back of her hand. Treasure, if you can call it that. And trust me, no secrets worth hearing under there. Curious, Morgana leaned closer, her voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. Tell me, what could be so important that it led you to crawl around a barroom floor like a desperate rat? Desperate? Gretchen gave the younger witch a frank stare. At the witch's academy, the woman would be thoroughly chastised for speaking to her elders like that, but Gretchen knew Morgana was something of an outcast to the likes of them. Not unlike herself. Sighing, she took another swig of ale before answering. I'm sure you'd find it hilarious. Now you have to tell me, urged Morgana, shifting her stool closer. All right, Gretchen relented, setting down her mug with a thud. I was looking for some ogre's dandruff. Ogre's dandruff, Morgana burst out laughing, her melodious voice echoing through the bar. What on earth do you need that for? Gretchen studied the contents of her mug, knowing that the woman's voice must have carried across half the room. Bartok was astutely pretending not to listen as he wiped down the bar, and the band of gnomes had climbed up the stools close by, 
bickering over a jug of ale Bartok had left for them. It's a long story, one best shared after another drink, or five. Then consider my interest thoroughly piqued, said Morgana, raising her glass in a toast, to ogre dandruff and the lengths we go to find it. Cheers, muttered Gretchen, clinking glasses with Morgana before draining her mug in a single gulp. You gonna leave us all in suspense or what? Bartok grunted, tossing a cleaning rag under the bar so he could fold his arms over his chest. All right, all right, Gretchen conceded, wiping her sweaty palms on her robes. It all started with a challenge I couldn't turn down. The regulars of the Swine and Claw leaned in closer, their eyes wide with anticipation. Morgana smirked and gestured for Gretchen to continue. Gretchen took a deep breath and relented, lowering her voice as she explained her predicament. You see, folks, it's all because of that no good rival of mine, Ethelinda, Gretchen began, a hint of frustration in her tone. She's been trying to outdo me at every turn in the potion business since I set up shop in the city and is always one step ahead. It's become a full-blown duel between us. A chorus of intrigued murmurs rippled through the group. Gretchen figured they must have heard about the ongoing cauldron clash. Gretchen continued. Now, the situation's gotten out of hand. Ethelinda challenged me to create a potion so unique and powerful that it'll leave me in the dust if I don't come through. And you won't believe this. She's wagered her prized recipe for temporary wisdom against my coveted potion of misplaced items in this bet. Right out in the market square with plenty of witnesses. Snickers erupted from the group, and Gretchen took a swallow of ale to wash away the bitterness. But here's the kicker, she said, leaning closer for dramatic effect. The potion she's dared me to concoct requires a rare ingredient, a pinch of ogre's dandruff. She knew I didn't have it in stock, and there's none to be found among the apothecaries in the city, so now she's got the upper hand. The friends burst into laughter at the bizarre twist in Gretchen's tale. Gretchen scowled as she added, there's something else, too. Ethelinda's spreading a malicious rumor that I'm out in the city, doing unspeakable things to ogres. She's making it sound like I've got a bevy of them squirreled away in a dungeon somewhere, and now every ogre I've tried to speak to has either tried to brain me on sight or has ran off before I could get a word in. The group's laughter died down, replaced by expressions of disbelief and concern. She didn't, Morgana hissed. She did. Morgana's lip curled. Hag. So you see, Gretchen continued, I've got no choice but to get that ogre's dandruff by stealth. My reputation and dignity as the town's leading purveyor of potions are on the line. But first, I need to find an itchy ogre willing to part with a few flakes. The bar was quiet for a few precious moments before the gnomes erupted in laughter, clutching their instruments as they hooted with delight. Ogre's dandruff, Pipperkin gasped between giggles. Why not ask for unicorn tears while you're at it? Or dragon toenail clippings, added Tinkertop, his chimes jingling merrily. Enough, snapped a tiny brownie standing atop a barrel behind the bar, her hazel eyes flashing with indignation. How dare you suggest there'd be any ogre grime in this establishment? I'll have you know my cleaning standards are impeccable. You must be Bridget, I'm guessing. I mean, no offense, the place is looking shipshape, but those louts had been gone for all of 30 seconds before I came in. How you swept up after them so fast is anyone's guess. Gretchen held up her hands in supplication, then rubbed her chin thoughtfully. I don't suppose you have the evidence stashed away in a dustbin out the back by chance? Bridget huffed, crossing her tiny arms over her chest. Any brownie worth her polish can magic away dust. You won't find what you are looking for here, madam. You should have tried a less reputable establishment. Ah, but then we would have missed out on such an epic tale of deceit and misfortune, Bartok said, his grin wider than ever. And who wouldn't want to see a witch on a wild dandruff chase? Ha ha, Gretchen grunted, narrowing her eyes at the pointy-eared barkeeper. Just you wait until I need goblin earwax for one of my brews. Fair enough, fair enough. Bartok held up his green hands in mock surrender. Still, Morgana mused, swirling her drink, 
You have quite the dilemma on your hands, don't you? Gretchen sighed and rested her chin on her hand, her ale forgotten. That I do. Any ideas on how to prank some ogres into giving up their dandruff without getting squashed like a bug? Ogres are quite peculiar when it comes to their scratching habits, said Morgana, twirling a strand of her black hair around her finger. It's no secret that they're sensitive about it, but you should see how they react to teasing. It's unruly. Bartok snorted, his sly grin widening. Unruly? That's putting it mildly. I once saw an ogre go berserk when someone mentioned his complexion in passing. He tore apart half the room before anyone could calm him down. Oi, witchy, called a grizzled dwarf from the far end of the bar, his beard bristling with laughter. Better watch your step or you'll end up with more than just dandruff on your robes. The regular patrons erupted into laughter, clapping Gretchen on the back and raising their tankards in amusement. All right, all right, Gretchen waved her hand in irritation. You've all had your fun, but seriously, any ideas from the Brains Trust here? A tried and tested method for procuring ogre leavings? Can't say I have, said an elderly elf, stroking his wispy white mustache. But I once needed a single tear from a stone giant for one of my potions. Now that was an ordeal. Stone giant's tears? Morgana gasped, her eyes gleaming as she leaned in closer. I've only ever read about those. Did you manage to obtain one? Indeed, I did, the elf replied proudly. I told him a joke so hilarious that he laughed until he cried. Of course, it took a few tries to find a joke he hadn't heard. Ha, ah, impressive, Gretchen said, feeling a camaraderie growing between her and fellow magical ingredient hunters. But what was the joke? The elf's lips twisted into a smirk. What do you call a rock that's out of shape? Gretchen chewed her lip as the other patrons muttered and rubbed their chins thoughtfully. A little sedimentary. The elf clapped his hand on the bar triumphantly. The patrons of the swine and claw cleared their throats or groaned, leaving the elf to guffaw into his mug. Gretchen belched and shook her head, still trying the figure out the punchline. Wait, wait, interrupted a mischievous looking sprite hovering above the group, her wings flickering like tiny flames. Have any of you ever attempted to collect the breath of a dragon? Now that's a challenge. Dragon's breath? Gretchen frowned. No, but it sounds like a blast. How did you manage that without being burned to a crisp? Simple, the pixie said, her voice lilting with laughter. I convinced the dragon that I was a rare species of firefly and asked it to blow gently on me so I could recharge my glow. Worked like a charm. Brilliant. Morgana clapped her hands together in delight. Oh, the things we do for our craft. Sounds like a rather dull dragon if you ask me, Gretchen muttered, her thoughts turning inward for a moment as she contemplated her own predicament. But no matter how difficult or absurd the task, we always find a way, don't we? Of course, said Sprocket. It's all part of the adventure. Well said, Sprocket. Gretchen raised her mug feeling a renewed sense of determination. To the ridiculous, the perilous, and the downright bizarre. May our potions be potent, our spells spectacular, and our adventures never ending. Hear, hear, the regulars chorused, lifting their drinks in agreement. With laughter ringing in her ears and the warmth of solidarity, or perhaps that was just the ale, filling her heart, Gretchen's sense of impending doom at the likelihood of failure diminished. If an elf could wrangle a tear out of a stone giant with a joke that bad, there had to be a way to come through with the goods and wipe that smarmy smirk off Ethelinda's face. If she could just get the patrons on board for a little magical mischief. Gretchen looked around at the regulars still chuckling at her predicament and shrugged, her lively face crinkling with mirth. Well, I suppose I'll have to devise a cunning plan then. Surely one of you guys could at least point me toward the most likely ogre. Krilok is the one you want, Bartok said as he set two mugs down in front of the dwarves at the end of the bar. Yes, Morgana nodded, always scratching that one, like a dog with fleas, but quick to anger too. Bartok has thrown him out three times already this month, Pipperkin added, as if that were a good thing. He is indeed the itchiest of all ogres. 
Hmm. Gretchen absently adjusted her hat and scratched the back of her scalp. And he works down at the tannery, you say? If the smell is anything to go by, Sprocket snorted. Gretchen wondered if she should take her quest over to the tannery, but dismissed the idea as she considered the chemicals used to cure hides and what effect they might have on any gathered specimens. The last thing she wanted was for contaminated dandruff to spoil her potion. She realized she'd begun scratching a little frantically, her hat almost toppling from her head, so she cleared her throat and pulled the brim down in irritation. Why was it that when anyone said the word itch, it was like summoning a horde imaginary lice? The regulars were giving her an odd look, so she took a swig of ale to buy her a little thinking time. The ogres likely had quarters somewhere in the warehouse to sleep, if not pallets on the warehouse floor, which didn't make scavenging among their bedding a better proposition. And this Krullock is a regular here, Gretchen rubbed her chin. If you have to keep kicking the guy out, perhaps I can conjure up a little mischief that'll keep him out of your hair for a while. What do you say, Bartok? Bartok's brow furrowed, his sly grin replaced with a look of concern. Hold on, he said, raising a green hand. What if things get out of hand? My pub could end up in shambles. More than usual, Morgana snorted, rolling her eyes. Shambles are a regular occurrence here. At least we could have a little fun this way. Besides, a little chaos never hurt anyone. Easy for you to say, Bartok muttered under his breath. Gretchen reached over the bar to place a reassuring hand on Bartok's shoulder. Don't worry, Bartok. I'll keep things under control. And if there's any damage, I promise to help you fix it up. Bartok sighed, his shoulders slumping in resignation. Fine, he grumbled. But if this goes belly up, I'm holding all of you responsible. All right, let's hear it, Morgana said, leaning in close. What's your brilliant plan for pranking these ogres? She'll offer to wrestle Krullock for a barrel of apple brandy, Sprocket said, and go straight for the scalp with a scratching stick. And we'll sit on Bridget so she can't interfere with that broom of hers, Pipperkin teased. The brownie in question glared at the gnomes with her tiny fists planted on her hips. Gretchen held up a hand to silence them before a miniature-sized bar fight could ensue. I'm not wrestling an ogre. The only person I trust to snap my bones is my chiropractor. Gretchen took a gulp of ale. Give a witch some thinking time, will ya? Why not set up a salon in the corner? The lippy dwarf at the end of the bar sneered. A coiffeur for the monstrous. Yeah? When was the last time you ever heard an ogre talk about taking a bath, let alone getting a haircut? Gretchen's lip curled. The smell alone should attest to that. A wager then, Morgana said. We all know ogres are fond of rolling the dice. I'm sure they'd think they were terribly clever if all they risked losing was a little dandruff. And if I lose? Ogres might not be the sharpest tools in the shed, but if they know they have something I want, it'll be extortion. Supposing they'd agree to it, that is. Morgana's lips widened in a sly smile. Not if we have the right dice. No magic dice in my pub. Bartok thumped a fist on the bar. The swine and claw has earned a decent reputation in this city these days, and I'm not about to go risking it for the sake of dandruff. Besides, it'll be your funeral if you go talking to Krulok about the state of his scalp. That was supposing he would talk to her at all. Gretchen mused as she chewed her lip. Most likely they'd start hurling heavy things in her direction just as soon as they saw her. Curse that Ethelinda. After this potion was brewed, she'd need to come up with a suitable malicious rumor to put about in retaliation. Well, let's just sort this out in the witch way, shall we? Morgana sat up straighter on her stool and lifted her nose. You said it yourself. You're the leading purveyor of potions in this city, and there's no problem that a potion can't fix. Surely it'll be easy enough to slip something into their ale. It's not like they'd taste it. Are you suggesting that my ale is substandard? Bartok glowered. Not at all. Morgana took a sip of witch's brew and smiled sweetly. Just potent and flavorful. Gretchen had already wondered about that and had gone so far as consulting her spell book to ask it for likely brews, which would have the ogres scratching like a dog with fleas. But perhaps that was overcomplicating matters. 
She slammed her hand on the table and exclaimed, I've got it, itching powder. We'd have to get close enough to sprinkle it on without them noticing, and then, bam, instant chaos and uncontrollable scratching, no unintended magical side effects to taint the dandruff, and extracting the powdered rosehip should be a cinch. Morgana gasped. That's actually brilliant, Gretchen, and rather devious, I must say. I'm impressed. Ha, Gretchen grinned, pleased with herself. We just need to find an opportune moment to do it. Maybe when they're distracted by something, like a lively performance or a particularly rowdy bar fight. Performances and rowdy bar fights are our specialty. Pipperkin climbed onto the bar with his fiddle and played a few sharp notes. And pranks come a close third, Tinkertop added. We would be honored to assist you on this mighty quest. Ah, uh, an itchy musical extravaganza. Sprocket twirled his drumsticks eagerly. We'd be happy to oblige, but we should be suitably rewarded, yes? How does a temporary tincture of height sound? Gretchen grinned into her mug. The gnomes bent their heads together to whisper among themselves, and it was Pipperkin who turned with his hands behind his back in earnest. That would be satisfactory. Bartok groaned, no doubt imagining what three overgrown gnomes could achieve in the space of one evening at his establishment, but Morgana reached over to clasp his green hand. Think of it, my dear goblin, she whispered eagerly. The laughter, the excitement, the swine and claw will be the talk of the town. You'll have empty ale barrels by morning. True, Bartok admitted, his trepidation wavering under Morgana's persuasive words. He glanced at the empty tables and chairs scattered haphazardly across the room, probably imagining them filled with raucous patrons. It would be quite the spectacle, wouldn't it? Absolutely, Morgana grinned. Besides, when was the last time you had this much fun, mm? Fun? Bridget interjected, pausing from her task of dusting off the bottles behind the bar. She leaped nimbly to land squarely on the bar top, eye level with the others. This isn't about fun, it's about consequences. What if someone gets hurt, or worse, what if the ogres retaliate? They aren't exactly known for their sense of humor, you know. Oh, come on, Bridget, Gretchen said, rolling her eyes. Where's your sense of adventure? Adventure? Bridget squeaked indignantly. I'm a brownie, not a thrill seeker. My job is to keep this place clean and tidy, not to cause chaos and mayhem. Relax, little one. Morgana flicked a stray curl of hair over her shoulder. We'll make sure everything goes smoothly. You might even enjoy yourself, what with the mess to clean up afterward. Enjoy myself? While pranking ogres, I think not, Bridget huffed, crossing her arms over her chest. Fine, Morgana sighed. If you insist on being such a killjoy, I suppose we'll just have to manage without your help. Good, Bridget snapped, turning on her heel and bustling away. Ah, well, Bartok said, shrugging his shoulders. You can't please everyone. She'll cheer up once she has a mess to clean up. She always gets a little surly when she has nothing to do. Gretchen glanced around the bar, and without a single cobweb dangling from the ceiling, she could see why the brownie was a little tetchy. She sighed, watching Bridget's retreating form head into the kitchens. All right, she said, turning her attention back to the motley crew gathered around the bar. We need to lure those ogres back here if we're going to pull this off. Well, that's easy, Morgana scoffed. What do ogres love more than anything else? Smashing things, Tinkertop suggested, receiving a glare from Bartok. Besides that, you tool-toting twit, Morgana snapped, rolling her eyes. I'm talking about their favorite delicacy, broiled tripe. Tripe? Pipperkin wrinkled his nose in disgust. I haven't seen that on the menu here since Bartok took over. Probably because I took over, Bartok said. The smell was atrocious. Contrary to their miasma, I understand ogres have a keen sense of smell. I'm sure they'd follow their noses right back here for dinner if we opened up a window and got cooking. Morgana smacked her lips. And chase away any other likely patrons, Bartok grumbled. You know, it just might work, Gretchen said. I'm sure I can put word around that Bartok's cooking up a gizzard feast tonight while I gather some itching powder from my shop and visit the butcher while I'm at it. 
It's settled then, Morgana clapped her hands together. To mischief and mayhem, Tinkertop lifted a cup in a toast. To Gretchen's surprise, most of the patrons lifted their drinks to echo the sentiment. To mischief and mayhem, Gretchen echoed, then drained her mug for good measure. Well, I'll just be off to gather those supplies. I'll be back here in an hour. She stood and adjusted her hat. Can't wait, Bartok said, wrinkling his nose. Bridget will have her work cut out for her in the kitchens alone after you witches have been in there. Gretchen shook her head, chuckling to herself as she pushed open the pub's creaky door. The afternoon was waning, the fresh breeze carrying the scent of adventure and a healthy dose of chaos. And as she walked down the cobblestone street, her thoughts danced excitedly, like fireflies on a summer's eve. Watch out, ogres, Gretchen whispered to herself, a wicked grin spreading across her face. You've met your match today. The pub's door swung open with a creak, and Gretchen strode in, arms laden with her newly acquired supplies. Her prominent teeth peeked from behind her grin as she headed straight to the kitchen. Behind her, the lingering smell of raw tripe wafted through the air, mingling with the scent of ale, floor polish, and burning oil lanterns hung up around the bar. By the seven sisters, what is that unholy stench? Bridget exclaimed, holding a tiny hand over her nose as she turned from her post-scrubbing mugs at the sink. An ogre delicacy, apparently, Gretchen replied with a chuckle, placing the bucket on the kitchen counter. I asked the butcher for the nice aged stuff. More like ogre atrocity. Morgana wrinkled her nose as she entered the kitchen, clutching her cloak around her as if it could protect her from the offending smell. Can't we just cast a spell to make it smell better? Tinkertop said, poking his head into the kitchen, his round glasses slipping down his nose as he sniffed the air. Come on, wouldn't that defeat the purpose? Gretchen grunted, swinging a heavy cast iron pot over the fireplace. We need the ogres to follow their noses here, remember? I think you'll attract every ogre within ten miles. Bartok pinched his nose for emphasis, then stepped between Pipperkin and Sprocket, who had begun jostling each other for a wrapped package that had been sitting on the counter. I'm guessing this is the itching powder? Sure is. Freshly ground, too. Gretchen nodded with professional pride. Ah, oh, Bartok, we were just having some fun, Sprocket whined, rubbing his arm where Pipperkin had elbowed him. Fun is one thing, but causing premature pandemonium is another, Bartok said, wagging a green finger at them. We need to keep our focus on the task at hand. Speaking of which, Gretchen said, dumping some lard into the pot, how are we going to make sure this itching powder gets to the right noggin? Leave that to us, Pipperkin said, puffing out his chest and adjusting his vibrant green waistcoat. Gnomes are masters of mischief, after all. Indeed, Tinkertop agreed, a glint of excitement in his blue eyes. Besides, I've been working on a little contraption that should do just the trick. He reached into one of his vest pockets and pulled out a small gadget. What does it do? Morgana leaned closer, her mouth twisting apprehensively. Nothing good, Bridget grumbled. It's something I've had in the works for some time, Tinkertop said, pulling a tiny screwdriver out of one pocket and adjusting a dial. Up on stage, we musicians take a magical performance quite seriously. Keeping a crowd bedazzled is no mean feat, especially when they are deep into their cups. Therefore, sometimes a little glitz and glamour is required. The gadget in Tinkertop's hand rattled alarmingly, then a loud pop sounded as Bridget screeched, holding her hands over her face. A cloud of glitter erupted in the kitchen, lingering in the air before settling over every conceivable surface. It's everywhere, Bridget moaned, jumping down from the sink to snatch up a broom. Gretchen wasn't sure if she planned to wallop Tinkertop or get sweeping right away. She held her breath for a moment before Bridget began sweeping toward Tinkertop, her tiny face contorted with rage, but Bartok took a sidestep to get between the pair. Great, Bartok said, clapping his hands together. Now that we have a plan, let's get this show on the road. You gnomes get back on that stage before the regulars start complaining, and Bridget, you get rid of this evidence 
while the witches prepare this feast of theirs. Uh, fine, Bridget adjusted her tiny apron. But if I find one piece of tripe in my hair, Gretchen, I'm holding you personally responsible. Fair enough, Gretchen replied, chuckling as she dumped the bucket of tripe into the sizzling pot. Now, let's set the stage for some good old-fashioned chaos, shall we? Gretchen, fiddling with her orange braid as she peeked from behind the stage curtains, watched in anticipation as Pipperkin and Sprocket scampered into position. Pipperkin cradled his tiny fiddle with the reverence of a mother holding a newborn, while Sprocket clutched his drumsticks, practically vibrating with excitement. All right, my little mischief makers, Gretchen whispered, unable to suppress a grin at the sight of the two gnomes, poised like coiled springs. She held the packet of itching powder steady as Tinkertop levered open his device, careful not to douse the gnome's fingers as she tapped the substance into it. Remember, timing is everything. The tripe is almost ready, and I've already sent some of the stable boys to let the ogres know about the menu. Once they arrive, you know what to do. Of course, Gretchen, Tinkertop stashed the gadget in one of his many vest pockets. We're professionals, after all. Professionals? Morgana smirked. I'd love to see your credentials. Hey, Pipperkin said, feigning offense. We graduated top of our class at the Academy of Gnome Mischief. We'll see, Morgana said. I'd wager you're just as likely to explode that thing on stage before those thugs even arrive. Sprocket poked his tongue out at the witch, then turned with drumsticks already spinning in his stout hands as Pipperkin struck the first chord. Right. Back to the kitchens and out of sight. Gretchen jerked her chin across the bar. If they see me out here, they might decide the tripe isn't worth it. You go ahead. I'll keep watch. Gretchen clapped the witch on the shoulder, pulled the rim of her witch's hat down, and scuttled back to the kitchens. Bridget hung from a light fixture, still trying to banish every speck of glitter from the room, and only grunted at the witch and continued her work. Gretchen couldn't help but notice that the brownie had started humming, though, and figured Bartok was right about her ingrained need to clean. She lifted the lid of the broiled tripe, then opened a window to let the scent waft onto the street. Yep, I'd say that's about as fragrant as it's going to get. After eyeing the seat next to the fire, Gretchen opted to pace instead, worrying over her appointment in the town square at noon tomorrow. If she didn't come through with the potion, she'd be humiliated in front of a crowd, and while she was no stranger to public embarrassment, the potion business she'd built up in the city was perhaps one of the greatest achievements of her life. Even her snooty sister Cordelia was proud of her, and the business allowed her to stay close by to her ward, Piper, who was studying at the Witches' Academy. If Ethelinda managed to chase her out of town, or worse, chase away her paying customers, she wasn't sure what she would do next. Just then, Gretchen's ears perked up at the sound of the front door creaking open and hurried to peer around the serving window in time to see three burly ogres lumber into the pub. Their hulking frames cast shadows across the room and their signature odor wafted through the air, which was no mean feat against the gizzards bubbling away behind her. Oi, Bartok, we heard there's some broiled tripe on tonight's menu. One ogre boomed, his voice as grating as nails on a chalkboard. Indeed there is, Krullock, Bartok shouted from behind the bar, giving the ogres a toothy grin. And it's fresh out of the kitchen. Good, another ogre grunted, plopping down at a table near the stage. We're starving. Showtime, Gretchen muttered under her breath, watching the gnomes who began elbowing each other eagerly. All right, everyone. Pipperkin called, drawing his bow across the fiddle's strings with gusto. In honor of our esteemed ogre guests, we've prepared a very special song just for tonight. Hit it, Tinkertop, Sprocket added, pounding away at his miniature drum set with fervor. As a lively tune filled the pub, the ogres squinted at the gnomes in suspicion, but it kept them from looking around the room where most of the patrons watched the ogres with interest. Gretchen took a calming breath. Gnomes up to mischief weren't out of the ordinary to ogres, and puffed out her cheeks as she turned to the hearth. 
Morgana bustled into the kitchens, a wicked grin plastered on her face. They're here, she whispered, rubbing her hands together. The chaos is about to begin, so I suggest you have your broom and dustpan at the ready. Trust me, Morgana, Gretchen said, eyes narrowing as she turned to peer out at Krullock, who was already absently scratching. I was born for moments like this. Ogres, ogres, we've got a treat for you, sang Pipperkin, his voice lilting in time with the music, while Tinkertop danced nimbly across the stage. Oi, watch this one, shouted Tinkertop, as he leaped onto a tabletop. A patron roared with laughter and raised his mug in salute. Bravo, Tinkertop, cried Morgana, clapping her hands in delight. Gretchen ducked in case the ogres turned to see Morgana standing beside her, but they must have been too concerned with what the gnomes had planned to worry about the background noise. Tinkertop continued his acrobatics, hopping from table to table. She felt the anticipation building inside her like a bubbling cauldron about to boil over. Even Bridget had abandoned her glitter hunt to join the witches in watching the scene out in the bar. Ah, our dear ogre friends, Tinkertop called, grinning mischievously, just before he executed a daring leap. Unfortunately, his foot caught on an empty tankard, sending it crashing to the floor and causing him to lose his balance. Whoopsie daisy, he squeaked, tumbling onto the ogre's table, upending a jug of ale in the process. The amber liquid splashed across the table, soaking the unsuspecting ogres. Gretchen's breath caught, and she rushed to scoop three bowls of tripe from the pot and set them on a tray. Oi, what's the big idea? bellowed Krullock, his face turning a deeper shade of green with anger. Terribly sorry, dear sirs, Tinkertop exclaimed, feigning innocence. I'm a bit clumsy today, it seems. Clumsy? I'll show you clumsy, the ogre lunged at the nimble gnome. Allow me to make it up to you with a little magic trick, Tinkertop shouted quickly pulling the itching powder gadget from one of his many vest pockets. He waggled his fingers over the top of the contraption, then turned the lever as he cried, Ta-da! Tinkertop dropped the gadget to the table as he leaped backward to get clear. This time, the popping sound it made was much louder than it had been in the kitchen. A cloud of itching powder filled the air, showering down upon the ogres and the rest of the patrons in a fine, irritating mist. Told you he'd mess it up, Morgana said, then pulled a pouch from her belt with a sigh. Ah, what's happening? One ogre screeched, his massive hands frantically clawing at his skin. Feels like I'm being bitten by a thousand tiny bugs, another ogre complained, scratching furiously. It was Krulok that Gretchen watched, though, who scratched too frantically to even speak. Grabbing her tray, she took a deep breath and bumped the door to the kitchen open with her hip. Stupid gnomes, a goblin screeched, trying to pat down his arms. Told you they'd mess it up. Huh? The big ogre stood and upended a table, glaring around the room. Lifting a jug, he smashed it over a chair and held up the sharp ceramic threateningly. Looks like we've got ourselves an old-fashioned bar brawl, Morgana cackled, rubbing her hands together with glee. Excuse me, coming through. I've got an order here for three ogres my special recipe. Gretchen precariously balanced the steaming bowls of broiled tripe on the tray. More tables overturned as the swine and claw patrons tried to rid themselves of the itching powder. Not the curtains, Bridget screeched as Tinkertop used the draperies to swing clear of a flailing ogre arm. I stitched those myself. And very fine work too, I must say, Gretchen agreed, sidestepping the ongoing chaos. Now stand back and watch the master at work. With a deep breath, she weaved through the melee, her orange braid flicking side to side as she deftly avoided the chaos. Her eyes locked on the ogres, their massive bodies writhing in itching agony. It wouldn't take long before the itching subsided long enough for them to decide to smash heads. Begging your pardon, watch your head there, elf. Hot, steamy, and pungent tripe for our esteemed guests. Gretchen called cheerily, leaping over a goblin sprawled on the floor. As she approached the ogre's table, she tumbled over a stool, carelessly abandoned in her path. Gah, she exclaimed, sending the bowls of tripe flying into the air. 
by the whiskers of my great aunt Griselda, Gretchen gasped, watching in horror as the tripe splattered onto an enraged ogre's head, only adding fuel to the firestorm of chaos. She pushed herself up from the ground, mentally cursing her clumsiness. Oops, was all she could muster, her cheeks flaming red with embarrassment. As the turmoil continued to swirl around her, Gretchen stared up at her target. Krullock was scratching like mad, dandruff raining down around him like a blizzard of grotesque snowflakes. Oh dear, does there seem to be a problem here? She yelled, catching the ogre's attention amidst the pandemonium and abandoning her tray for a dustpan and broom she'd tied to her belt. Here, let me help you out with that. You, the ogre growled, glaring at her with bloodshot eyes. He lurched off his chair and knocked the dustpan from her hand, sending it flying across the room. Now, now, let's not be hasty. I've got some salves that'll do just the trick to get rid of the itch. Those gnomes sure are pesky, huh? Did I mention that there's a malicious rumor going around about me which is founded in absolute nonsense? Just ask the ogres at the salt and bog out in Edgewater. I'm a friendly witch. Now let's just get you back on that chair and... Krullock roared as Gretchen patted his shoulders, his breath worse than broiled tripe left in the sun for a week, and the witch ducked before his meaty hand could clamp her neck. Crawling between his legs to relative safety underneath a table, she held her breath as Sprocket went racing past, now wielding his drumsticks as weapons, thankfully commanding Krulock's attention. She stared at her hands, now covered in brownish itching powder, and more importantly, whitish flakes that were worth more to her than gold at that moment. The itching powder didn't bother the witch, who had long since become accustomed to corrosive potion mishaps. Quick, Bridget, Gretchen shouted over the din of the brawling bar. I need a broom and a dustpan. Are you daft? The cleanup starts after they stop smashing things, the tiny brownie replied, her eyes wide with disbelief. Come on, before it's scattered to the four winds. The brownie clutched the requested items close to her chest as Gretchen scraped what she could together with her hands from the floor. Bridget's eyes darted around the room, and she chose her moment to dive from one table to the next, neatly avoiding brawling goblins, dwarves, and ogres alike. The scratching, for the most part, had stopped in favor of fighting, and Gretchen knew she had to hurry before Krulok set his sights back on her. The brownie pressed the dustpan and broom into her hands before fleeing to safer territory. All this for a pinch of dandruff, she muttered to herself, sweeping up the precious flakes with a mix of disgust and determination. Goblins and ogres and itching powder, oh my. As she collected every last bit, Gretchen heard Morgana cackling from her vantage point at the bar, her laughter like the ringing of silver bells. Gretchen hurried over, holding the broom protectively over her prize. Oh, Bartok, who knew your little pub could be so entertaining? The younger witch had managed to steer clear of all the fighting and had a fresh glass of witch's brew at her side. Entertaining, Bartok grumbled, his green face buried in his hands. This is a disaster. Nobody is going to come here when they hear that they're liable to be covered in itching powder. Those darn gnomes and their stupid gadgets. Come now, dear goblin, Morgana teased, flicking her midnight black hair with a flourish. Where's your sense of adventure? Adventure doesn't pay the bills, Morgana, he said, peeking through his fingers at the ongoing commotion. Neither does complaining, Bartok, said Gretchen, who had joined him behind the bar. But a promise is a promise, so I'll make sure I help you get everything fixed up before the night is over. Even if it costs more than the ogres would have swindled me for, if I'd been in a position to bargain for this stuff. She held up her dustpan with a lopsided grin. Only you, Gretchen. Bartok sighed, shaking his head. Only you could turn a simple prank into an all-out war zone. Thank you. I try my best, she said, her eyes gleaming with mischief. At that moment, the ogres caught sight of the fleeing gnomes by the door and roared in anger. Their massive bodies shook the floorboards as they thundered after their tormentors, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Good luck catching them, boys, Morgana called after the ogres, her voice dripping with sarcasm. I hear gnomes are quite elusive. You'll be next, sorceress, one of the ogres shot back, 
his face red and puffy from the itching powder's effects. Morgana only scoffed and took a sip of witch's brew. Once the ogres had fled, Bartok fetched a broom from behind the bar and started forcibly separating the rest of the rowdy patrons. It didn't take long for the goblin to subdue the regulars and the scratching to start once more. Bridget came out from her hiding place from behind the stage, her tiny fists on her hips and a certain gleam in her eye. All right, you lot, she called out to the patrons, clapping her hands together. Time to get this place back in order. And don't worry, I've got just the thing for all your itch-induced woes. She brandished a small pouch filled with a silvery powder that sparkled in the dim light. Bridget wasted no time in dusting the regulars with it, eliciting sighs of relief as the itching subsided. Ah, bless you, Bridget, a dwarf exclaimed, rubbing his now soothed skin. I thought I'd be scratching myself raw for the rest of the night. Thank Morgana for that, Bridget replied, nodding toward the sorceress, who was still smirking into her drink. She's the one who whipped up this little miracle, though I might have added a pinch of extra sparkle for effect. So glitter is heinous, but sparkles are fine? Morgana teased. Glitter is the worst, Bridget curled her lip and continued sprinkling the antidote onto the heads and shoulders of the grateful pub goers. But sparkles are another thing entirely. Meanwhile, Gretchen made her rounds under tables and chairs, making sure she hadn't missed any precious dandruff. As she emerged from beneath a large, overturned table, she couldn't help but smile at the sight of Bridget's enthusiastic efforts. Careful there, Bridget, Gretchen called out. You're starting to look like you're having fun with all that powder flying around. Someone might accuse you of enjoying yourself. Better that than a scratch fest, Bridget shot back. So, did you get what you wanted, witchy? Asked the lippy dwarf from the bar, who was sporting an egg on his head and a cracked lip. Sure did. Gretchen replied, raising her dustpan and broom triumphantly. So I guess that means the next drink is on me. That elicited a cheer from the weary patrons left at the swine and claw, and Bartok gave her a sharp you better mean it look, which made Gretchen bark a laugh. But he got pouring as Gretchen emptied the contents of her dustpan into a pouch. Do you think those gnomes got away? I'm guessing they might need to lie low for a while. Gretchen fastened her pouch to her belt and stretched her creaky back. I have no doubt they're hiding in some attic in fits of laughter, Bartok said, as he filled jugs of ale to pass around. It's hardly new to those three. They spend half their time lying low, Morgana drawled. But one day they might push their luck too far. Here's hoping, Bridget grinned wickedly, though Gretchen thought that deep down, she probably liked the gnomes more than she let on. Now let's see about getting this place back in order. We've got work to do, people. As the regulars pitched in to help, the pub slowly returned to its former glory, albeit with a few more scratches and dents than before. But despite the lingering chaos, there was a tangible sense of a prank well executed, with patrons recounting all the messy details as the floors were swept and the lanterns straightened. Gretchen attended to what magical mending she could with a smug smile. While she knew she had quite the night ahead of her after she got back to her shop, it was worth it. Gretchen stepped out of her potions shop, her orange braid swaying behind her as she locked the door. She glanced at the vial in her hand, a mixture of swirling colors that seemed to dance with anticipation. Despite the bags under her eyes and the yawning that threatened to unhinge her jaw, she couldn't help but feel a surge of confidence in her latest concoction. I've got this, Gretchen mumbled, tucking the potion into a pocket of her robes. Ethelinda's face will be worth it. Gretchen made her way to the town square, the sun beating down on her witch's hat, making her reconsider her life choice of all black attire. As she fanned herself with a hand, she almost bumped into a trio of small figures, each wearing an oversized hood that practically swallowed their small frames. Oi, cried Pipperkin, his rosy cheeks barely visible beneath the shadow of his hood. Watch where you're going, lady. Apologies, kind sirs, Gretchen said, stifling a laugh at the sight before her. I didn't see you there with your interesting garb for such a warm day. Interesting 
Sprocket said, adjusting his hood so that it covered his mismatched clothes completely. We're incognito, we are. On the lamb. Tinkertop nodded, making a poor attempt at a serious expression. His round glasses magnified the twinkle in his blue eyes, betraying his true emotions. Of course, Gretchen replied, her amusement evident. Well, I'll leave you to your skulking then. Good day, gentlemen. Wait, Sprocket called after her, his energy seemingly unaffected by the sweltering sun. We can't help but think that better disguises are in order. The ogres are searching for gnomes. Perhaps with a little extra height, we might discard these robes. Ah, Gretchen said, turning back to the gnomes and tapping the side of her nose. I almost forgot. I have something for you. She reached into a hidden pocket and pulled out three small vials filled with a shimmering golden liquid. The gnomes exchanged excited glances before Pipperkin spoke up. Is that? Indeed it is. Gretchen handed each gnome a vial. Your promised tincture of temporary height. Now remember, only use a single drop each or, she wagged a finger at them, you might find yourselves taller than you bargained for. Try being incognito when you're towering over the tallest guards in the city. Thank you, kind witch, Sprocket said, his tiny hands shaking with anticipation as he clutched the vial. We'll be the tallest gnomes in all the land. Or at least for a few hours, Tinkertop added, stowing his vial safely in one of the many pockets of his gadget-laden vest. Go on then, Gretchen shooed them away. Enjoy your newfound height responsibly, and if anyone asks, her eyes twinkled with mischief. You didn't get it from me. Cross our hearts, the gnomes chorused before scampering off, their hoods bouncing comically with each step. Those little rascals. Gretchen smirked, a warm feeling spreading through her chest as she pictured the fun they would have, probably at Bartok's expense. With a renewed sense of purpose, she continued toward the town square, taking in the bustling market stalls and chattering townsfolk. As Gretchen approached the stage in the center of the square, she noted Ethelinda waiting impatiently, her arms crossed over her fine gray linen dress, and her eyes filled with skepticism. So, Ethelinda snapped, scanning Gretchen up and down. You showed up then. I take it you have a potion to show me? Of course I've got the darn potion, Gretchen replied, giving her braid a tug as she nodded confidently. I don't see what's so hard to believe about that, given that I'm the best potions witch in this city. With her voice pitched loud enough to capture the attention of passing shoppers, people paused in their errands to gather around. Gretchen flashed them a toothy grin and held the vial aloft. Ha! Ethelinda scoffed, tugging her light gray witch's hat down over her brow. Well, I'll be the judge of that, Gretchen Mirkwood. Of course, Gretchen said, rolling her eyes at Ethelinda's theatrics. May the best witch win. Though outwardly smug, Ethelinda betrayed her anxiety with the incessant tapping of her fingers against the wooden edge of the stage. Gretchen's grin only became toothier. Come now, Ethelinda, Gretchen teased, unable to resist poking fun at the sorceress's sudden display of nerves. You're not worried about losing this little competition, are you? Hardly, Ethelinda sniffed, but her eyes flicked from Gretchen to the crowd and back again. I merely want to ensure that no one is, ahem, cheating. Cheating? Gretchen feigned shock, placing a hand over her heart. I wouldn't dream of it. Good, Ethelinda said sharply, her gaze narrowing. Because I've brought someone who will be able to tell if your potion works or not. With an imperious wave of her arm, she beckoned forth a towering figure swathed in a hooded cloak. As the hulking form lumbered onto the stage, Gretchen couldn't help but lean forward. It was customary that the witches didn't know the intended purpose of the potions they challenged each other to make, but that looked suspiciously like an, Behold, Ethelinda announced, her voice booming out over the audience, the ultimate judge for our little contest. Gretchen swallowed and scanned the stage for a quick exit, but there were too many folks crammed in to watch the display. Please take a seat, Ethelinda gestured to the stool next to her as the cloaked figure approached. As he settled onto the stool with a grunt, Gretchen folded her arms over her chest and held her breath. All right, enough with the theatrics, she urged. Let's see what you've got. Very well, Ethelinda replied haughtily. 
With one swift motion, she yanked the hood off the figure, revealing, Krulluk, Gretchen blurted, her eyes widening. The ogre sitting before her was none other than the itchy ogre from the swine and claw himself. Surprise, Ethelinda smirked, clearly enjoying the look on Gretchen's face. Now then, let's see if your potion can work its magic on our dear friend here. Gretchen stepped back to the furthest point away from the ogre, who flashed his teeth in a nasty snarl at the witch as he absently scratched his scalp. She couldn't believe Ethelinda had roped Krulluk into this little charade. And here she'd been thinking that the witch lacked a sense of humor altogether, however dark. Enough yammering, Krulluk growled, his voice booming across the stage. Get on with it. All right, all right. Gretchen said, retrieving the vial and handing it to Ethelinda, already suspecting what the potion was supposed to do. Such a dainty little bottle, Ethelinda observed, holding the vial up to the light. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Double distilled, Gretchen said, lifting her chin in the air. It'll be fine. We'll see, Ethelinda said, uncorking the vial and giving it a tentative sniff. As she held it over the ogre's scalp, Gretchen's theory was confirmed. As soon as the potion made contact with Krulluk's noggin, the ogre visibly relaxed, his previously furrowed brow smoothing in relief. Ah, uh, he sighed. That feels better already. See? Gretchen exclaimed, unable to resist a triumphant grin. Told you it would work. Hmm? Ethelinda grunted, her eyes narrowing slightly before she glanced between the ogre and Gretchen. You two, you were in cahoots, weren't you? Krulak bared his teeth in a snarl, and Gretchen rolled her eyes. After that nonsense you spread around the city about my ogre experiments? Gretchen held her hands to her hips. I don't think so. No, I got that dandruff fair and square. That doesn't mean you're off the hook for that stunt you pulled last night, witch. Krulak directed a glare at Gretchen with eyes the color of questionable swamp water. I did no such thing. Ethelinda sniffed. You'll find your questionable reputation in this city is your fault alone, Gretchen Mirkwood. Sure, Gretchen rolled her eyes. But the fact of the matter is that I delivered the potion as promised, which seems to be doing wonders on this guy's noggin. So do you concede now that I'm the better potions witch? Never. Ethelinda set her jaw mulishly and stared at Krulak's scalp. You got lucky this time but my cure for ogre's dandruff is hardly the most vexing potion to brew. Gretchen turned and raised a hand to the crowd, feeling the sweet sense of victory flood her senses. It earned a few cheers, but most of the people either just wandered off or began chatting among themselves about the spectacle. Enough, Ethelinda interrupted, tucking Gretchen's potion away into one of her many cloak pockets with a flourish. I feel that a rematch is in order. Sore loser, Gretchen grumbled under her breath as she watched Ethelinda produce a scroll from another pocket, her smile twisting into something more menacing. Krulloch, seemingly tired of the spotlight, cast a final glare at Gretchen before descending from the stage while gently massaging his gleaming scalp instead of scratching it. Here you are, dear, she cooed, extending the scroll to Gretchen. Your prize for successfully concocting my cure for ogre's dandruff, my coveted recipe for a potion of temporary wisdom. If you're really that good, I'll wager that you won't mind coming back for round two after you've mastered the recipe. Fine. Gretchen snatched the scroll from Ethelinda's grip. As she unfurled it, her eyes scanned the list of ingredients, and an amused snort escaped her lips. Well, I suppose I should be grateful you didn't ask me to collect fairy dust or minotaur toenails. Believe me, Ethelinda replied with an icy smile. The thought crossed my mind. Gretchen rolled her eyes, focusing instead on the spidery handwriting on the scroll. I'll be generous, Ethelinda said, her voice dripping with condescension and pitched to reach every corner of the town square. And give you a week to complete the potion, or our little wager is off. Wouldn't dream of keeping you waiting, Ethelinda, Gretchen retorted, her voice laced with sarcasm. Good, I expect nothing less than perfection, Ethelinda replied, her tone unmistakably smug. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have more important matters to attend to.
Gretchen bristled at the insult, but kept her focus on keeping a straight face. She had a temporary wisdom potion to brew, and by the seven sisters, she'd make sure it was the best one Ethelinda had ever seen. Stone giant's tears and dragon's breath, eh? Gretchen murmured, her bushy orange eyebrows raising in amusement once she was sure Ethelinda was far enough away. This'll be quite the adventure. She glanced around the town square, her mind already calculating the best course of action. The swine and claw it is then, she said, rolling up the scroll and tucking it into the folds of her robe. I've got a stone giant and a dragon to track down. Now, I wonder if that elf knows any more terrible rock jokes. Thank you for joining us on this magical journey through A Witch Walks Into a Bar. If you've enjoyed the laughter, camaraderie, and unexpected magic woven into these stories, don't miss out on future enchantments. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell for instant notifications. By doing so, you'll be the first to embark on new audiobook adventures, where every tale is a doorway to a world brimming with laughter, spells, and delightful surprises. Your support means the world to us, and we can't wait to share more magical moments with you. So hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and let the enchantment continue. Until next time, happy listening, and may your days be filled with magic and whimsy.